This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. Testing, testing. We got a busy day ahead of us today. Big shout out to our patrons and VIP members. Y'all are amazing. These folks vote for our style on Bruise Lab each episode and they voted for us to do a mead. You can uh, become a patron by going to our website and clicking on the Patreon link or clicking join under any of our YouTube videos will help you become a VIP member on YouTube. We are going to make a black cherry melomel. Things you're going to be voting on today are honey, tannin, yeast, and wild card. This is going to be tart, meaning that when we back sweeten this sucker, we're probably going to have to back sweeten it up pretty heavily to combat some of that acid. Your yeast choice is going to be clutch. Also, we've got a little bit of a curveball I'm going to throw you here and there throughout the day today. What we have here, we've got some dice. We've got a d20, is that a d4, d6? Uh, we've got some dice. For a few of these, I'm gonna have you all choose a die. And as we choose our ingredients, we will be rolling for quantity. <laughs> Let's get started with voting, and then I will move on to doing some of these chores and getting some of these things out of our way. We've got a gallon of black cherry juice here. I would like to get this brewed in the two-gallon bucket. Unfortunately, my Mr. Beer and my two-gallon bucket are both occupied at the same time. So this is box one, your honey box. First option for honey is going to be some Tupelo honey from Honey Next Door. We have two pounds of Tupelo that we can use in this. Our second option for honey is some buckwheat honey. Big ol' three pound bag of buckwheat honey. I don't think we would want to use all three pounds. Buckwheat honey against dark cherry might be really fun. Our third option is in a bucket down here off camera. Raspberry blossom honey. This raspberry honey is relatively robust. I think that it would stand up against this. However, at least in the hydromels that I've made with it, once you start adding the acids and the tannins, the, the raspberry kind of hangs out in the background a little bit. Again, that's a low honey quantity, so doubling or tripling that by volume would probably help with this. But your third option for honey is to boche some honey, and you would be able to boche any of the three options here. I don't know if it's a great idea, so those are your honey options, Tupelo, Raspberry Blossom, Buckwheat, or Bocheting, one of the three. So we're going to get this racked off. That looks great. Yeah, Larry, you got to remember that there was like Kool-Aid and stuff added to this too. Oh, and that raspberry powder was in here, wasn't it? I'm going to guess it's from the raspberry powder we put in here. Looking at my markings on here. Yeah, there's probably a full quarter gallon of leaves in the bottom of this bucket. That's wild. Pretty color though. I think we'll not taste this today. Let this settle out some. Nice and red. Check this out. Excellent. That's one thing out of our way. Looks like currently by voting, you're in favor of raspberry blossom, honey. Like that. That also means that we wouldn't be bocheting today. Like that also. So how do y'all want to do the dice roll? I'm going to let y'all figure this out. There's got to be a way to do this in a way that would be really cool. You know what? Yeah, we could do D4 for pounds and D20 for ounces. 2.5 times the 20 die roll. So the highest roll of 20 would make 50 ounces. Okay, I can see that. I'd like to keep this as simple as possible for our first go. We're going to use a pound of honey, and then the D20 is going to become our ounces. We could end up at nearly a two and a quarter pounds. I think that's the easiest way of doing this. Let's go on to voting for our next ingredient. The next thing we're going to be choosing here is yeast, and the reason we're going to be doing that is because I'd like to get a yeast starter going. Because of the low pH of this juice, I want some healthy yeast going in here uh, when we get it going. So we need to get a yeast starter going with your first option is the nice floral and delicate while aggressive K1V1116 wine yeast. 71B 
is option two. Your third option is D47, one of my favorite yeasts. 71B, we have to remember, will convert some of the malic acid to ethanol. D47, nice aggressive yeast, really clean at lower temperatures, probably my favorite wine yeast. And then our last option, this one is viewer submitted. This came to us from Casey. This is some Scare Kvaik. I'm not sure what the alcohol tolerance of Scare is. That could definitely be a factor that comes into play when we start dumping honey in here. D47, 71B, K1, V116, or Scare Kvaik. I think given the pH on this and given what could potentially be a high gravity when we roll the die, a wine yeast is probably preferable. Each of these three wine yeasts could do something very different to this brew. Also, 71B is probably gonna be aggressive, throw a few off flavors, stuff that'll age out. It tends to kind of express itself at this temperature. It's about 71, 72 degrees in here. K1 V116, actually has a pretty low recommended fermentation temperature. Not only does it retain flavor from the honey, but it creates some florals. It's often recommended for meads or wines that have like flower petals in them. But this room may be a little warm for K1V116, and so you might get some off flavors, some expressions. Both of those things with both of those yeasts should age out. D47 is usually a pretty clean yeast but um, once you get it into the higher 70s, you start to get some of those expressions as well. And 71B is going to, for the most part, really cut through the, the sugars while also giving us some like smoothing of the flavor profile, dependent on how much malic acid is in here. 71B can be clean when treated right. Scare Kvike, I have only used this in beer so far. TBD on what it would do in something like this. We could get crazy with it and put it outside and let it get nice and hot. So we do get a lot of those expressions from the yeast. Mr. Mike suggests 1.5 pounds plus a D20 for ounces. So that way our potential range is a bit higher. I think that's probably correct. And thank you for doing the math. If it's a tie, we do both. I do not want to co-pitch. For one, I'm sure one of those is a is probably a killer factor strain, so it would just eat up the other yeast. Right at a pound of gallberry honey in here. This one was made with pomegranate molasses, six pounds of fruit, three pounds of honey. This is a pretty bold project by Bruise Lab standards. But I kind of love that because this is not the type of thing that I, I would probably ever like brew on my own. That's kind of been the fun of these experiments. I'm going to give this a nice gentle stir. Try not to break the surface tension on this and introduce any oxygen to it. But also make sure that that honey is nice and mixed throughout. This is raw honey, so there's also like protein pollen chunks in here too. Those will have to settle out. I'm not sure really what the term for that is. I've taken to calling it a honey haze, because you know how you can get a pectin haze or a protein haze. Honey has its own particular kind of haze. And the fortunate thing is honey haze tends to drop out on its own. It doesn't really ever need like a fining agent or additional help to drop out. I think we're pretty well mixed up. Excellent. Whew, this is hot on the nose. A lot of alcohol burn. That's gonna need to die down. Every time I taste that, I forget about the smoked jalapenos. Woo! Damn, that's good. Yeah, yeah, that one's a winner. It's got that heat, it's, now it's like stupid sweet, but like not like overly sweet, it's not cloying we see, but it's like, bam, I'm mead. The fruity flavors are really enhanced by the sweetness and the, uh, the tartness already has backed off some, given the, the back sweetening. This is pretty clear as it is. Once the honey haze drops out, we'll bottle this, but damn, when did we make this? So this was started February 20th, so it's two months from yeast pitch and it's already like, other than those fusels on the nose, you don't get any in the palate. It's already perfectly lovely drinkable. I think if we give this another two or three months, let some of those fusels break down and let the aromatics kind of mellow and meld, this is gonna be freaking killer. 
Unfortunately, it includes that 12 ounce bottle of Acer Glen, so it's a little bit hard for y'all to replicate, but dang, mm. heck yeah. Let's vote for the next ingredient. We'll roll a d20 to know how much honey that we need, and then we'll check the gravity on this graph, and we need to still rack off this durian wine. Durian, pooch, whatever. Box number three. It's our tannin box. Obviously, part of the acid sweetness triangle. For more information, go to our YouTube channel and find our how to make mead video called the Triforce of Balance. And we talk all about balancing your brews. So we need tannin. We need something to kind of cut through the sugars and the acids in the final product. It's always fun to add your tannin right up front, particularly a couple of these options in here are options that you don't often add right up front. So first option for tannin is some light toast American oak. An oaked black cherry melomel with raspberry blossom honey could be quite fun. In the same vein, we have some dark toast American oak. Same kind of oak, different level of toast. Our third option is lime leaves. Maybe we'll uh, roll a d20 for how many lime leaves we put in there. And our last option for tannin is tangerine peel, citrus tangerina pericarpium. Debate, discuss, what would complement raspberry blossom honey and black cherry juice as far as tannin goes, dark oak, light oak, tangerine peel, or lime leaf. And we need to get our yeast starter going. Ba -ba -bow. Dark oak, light oak, currently tied. Oh, that smells good. Let's rehydrate some yeast. Probably should use water for this usually, but since we're doing a no water batch, I'm just gonna YOLO here. All right, dark oak seems to be in the lead. I've never oaked something in primary, I don't think. I think I've only ever oaked either once primary is done or in secondary. The Acer Glen recipe that I've been working on actually has oak in at the end of primary as a way of like preventing one additional transfer. Let's go ahead and get this durian racked. That will help me clean out some space here. And I believe we discussed doing a rough chop of this ginger, like enough to get it into the carboy. Oof, it's aromatic. After that episode, when y'all decided you wanted to do this ginger in secondary, I put this into the freezer where it has lived since until this morning when I took it out and thawed it. And this ginger has not been sanitized. I think it was rinsed, but it has not been sanitized. So there's a chance that there will be a little bit of activity in here from the ginger bug. I doubt there are any remaining sugars. I don't remember what yeast we used in this either. I guess if we used a killer factor yeast, we wouldn't have to be concerned about activity. I just have a feeling this thing's gonna be fizzing by tonight. Paula asks, how's the durian smell? I haven't got there yet. I've been trying to save that for y'all. I know that this durian project has meant a lot to you, so I didn't want to take that away from you. It is a lot of ginger. It is a pound of ginger in a one gallon batch. We got a slow flow here. We got durian blocking part of our racking cane. Still moving though. The part that's racking is actually fairly clear. Some nice clarity. Unfortunately, I think that may be all that we're gonna get off of it because a lot of our brewing liquid has been sucked up by the honeysuckle. We are left with just about half a gallon of a final product here. So I think what we should do is go ahead and let this sit for a week or so. It's still gassing off, so there's probably gonna be a nice CO2 blanket in here. I don't know that we should necessarily trust 
the CO2 blanket. Maybe on next week's Brews Lab, I borrow a half gallon carboy from Man Made Mead and we rack that off the ginger into the half gallon carboy so that way we don't have any head space as this thing ages. What do y'all think about that? Have we voted on tannin? Did I miss the tannin? What one? Dark oak one. Okay. So we're gonna start with one pound of honey and then we're rolling a D20 to determine how many ounces are going to get added. One pound and that's a 19. One pound, 19 ounces. That means we're going to have two pounds, three ounces of raspberry blossom honey in this. So let's move on to wild card. And while y'all are discussing and debating and voting on wild card, I can be weighing out two pounds, three ounces of honey. First wild card ingredient. I don't even think this has been opened yet. Harissa. It's a North African heat, according to the label. It's a spice blend that includes paprika, caraway, crushed red chili, cayenne, coriander, cumin, garlic, peppermint, and just the slightest touch of sea salt. That could be fun. Second option. This is from a local spice shop here in Oklahoma City. Ground turmeric for your health. Turmeric will give it a nice uh, Mediterranean kind of vibe, as well as being a nice colorant. Might pick up some of that orange yellow color. Your third wild card option today is coriander. A lovely spice. Nice, robust, kind of herbal, spicy blend in there. Kind of nutty. Could be a lot of fun. Final option, unsulfured molasses. So, so far we are rehydrating some K1V116 that was voted on by the chat. We're brewing a black cherry melomel, a mead style as decided by our members and patrons. We're using dark toasted oak as our tannin and raspberry blossom honey as our honey. Now we are trying to decide for our wild card. Coriander, turmeric, harissa, or molasses. This raspberry blossom honey is from Maine Bees. They make, I should say, produce incredible honey. Uh, the bees make it, but their honey is quite good. Happy to promote honey producers that make exceptional honey. Coriander and molasses both sound fun to me. Harissa, I think, could be a breakout hit though. Just saying. This honey, while being wonderfully fragrant, aromatic, delicious honey, also arrived completely crystallized. FYI, I cleaned and sanitized this right before the episode. Gosh, it's such a shame this has to become a mead because I just want to eat it. I'm sure the YouTube video part of this is going to look really cool with me ducking down behind the workbench. Looks like Harissa is in the lead. Quarters of an entire jar. Y'all are masochistic. The idea behind the Harissa should be a nice subtle je ne sais quoi in there. Not an overwhelming flavor. Whoop! That splattered. I think we've decided we're gonna do a D4 per quarter teaspoons for the Harissa, if that's what we go with. What do you wanna do for the oak? How do you wanna decide how much oak goes in here? We've got probably around 100 grams of dark toasted oak. Got just a few minutes left to vote for your wild card, and Harissa is way in the lead. So we're gonna roll a D4 for quarter teaspoons of Harissa. You all ready? We got a four. We rolled a four. So one teaspoon of Harissa right in the primary. Ooh, man, this smells good. Harissa. Y'all seem to be making this kind of complicated. 
All right, let's do a d12, multiply it by 10. So we rolled a five. We're putting 50 grams of dark American oak in here. This could be the next big thing. D20 brewing could be the next big thing. And y'all can say that you were here for it when it happened live. We never did get to check in on our graph. We'll do that next week. Get your guesses in now for what the gravity on this sucker is. Woo! <laughs> Good Lord. 1.141. Basically off the charts, crazy high. What are the odds this thing finishes dry? Unlikely? I don't know what accounts for the high graph. That thing uh, fired up there. Yeah, you know, like 18 and a half percent. If it goes to 18%, we might go all the way. Okay, well, thank you all for watching. We got some good chores done today. We brewed up a black cherry melomel with raspberry blossom honey, harissa, dark toasted American oak, and K1V1116 wine yeast with a starting gravity of 1.141, which is absurdly high, but here we are. As always, brew responsibly, drink responsibly, have fun. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't be afraid to put Harissa in your mead. Y'all take it easy. I'll see you next time.